Welcome to the channel. So in this video, I'll be doing a review of the Ender 2 Pro from Creality. And this is an upgraded version from the Ender 2. Has a lot of uh, better features to it, you know, such as uh, tensioners, belt tensioners, things like that. Better shroud. Now, I paid it a little bit less than this that you see here. And I would recommend that, you know, you, you get it on sale. Um, I would not pay full price for this thing, especially now. But it's a mini form factor printer. You know, it's definitely targeted for a beginner, you know, people entering the hobby. It's bowed in style, you know, it has your standard Creality hot end. There's absolutely nothing amazing about this machine. Um, it has a pretty decent build plate. Uh, that's one of the good things about it. But again, it's very standard, very bare bones, not a whole lot to it. Uh, nothing groundbreaking whatsoever. But you know, we'll get more into that as the review progresses. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, so this is the overall view of the printer. Now, I think Creality's done a fantastic job on the aesthetics of this printer. I think it's a nice looking printer. Um, you know, the color scheme that they got going is really nice. All of that. Again, it's a very basic printer, but it does look nice. Okay, so here's a look at the bed. Now, the bed is a build tech surface, which is magnetic. Uh, it's really easy to take things on and off of. Uh, I'm just not sure how long it'll last. And they're hard to find. I can't find just the bed itself, but there are plenty from third party options. Anyway, now the wheels here are mini. You know, they're, they're not the normal size that you're used to. And on this side, they're actually easy to get to, easy to turn, you know, no problem whatsoever. But on this side, they sit down in this little area and both of these wheels are really hard to turn or hard to, you know, reach. Uh, so keep that one in mind. It does work, but it's just difficult. Now, like I mentioned previously, there are tensioners on your Y and your X axis, so it makes it really easy for you to set the tension on the belts. Uh, again, this was an upgrade from the Ender 2, which didn't have either of these. Okay, so here's a look at the fan shroud and the hot end. Now, uh, again, I like the design here. It's, you know, like your Ender 3 V2 Neo. Um, all of those have basically the same design. Now, you would think that from the looks of it that there are two fans, but there's not. There's only one right here, and there's the nozzle for it. I don't really even think there's room for another fan in here, um, or like a BL Touch or something, but it's such a small bed, you don't really need uh, a probe. But anyway, uh, it has a standard you know, V6 style hot end that all of the other Enders have in it. Nothing fancy, um, nothing new. Okay, so here's a look at the extruder on this printer. Now, for those of you who remember the you know, Ender 3 or the Ender 3 V2, this is all plastic. Um, so, you know, you're probably gonna have issues of it breaking like you did on all of those. So you might wanna upgrade this to a metal one at some point. Okay, so here's a look at the back of the machine. Now, this is your spool holder arm. Uh, I really like this design that they've got going on here. Um, it is collapsible for storage, I guess, but you know, you're gonna want it extended to feed directly into the extruder. Works really well, really nice design. Wire management, um, you know, I'm not really complaining about any of this. It's pretty tidy uh, with the wire looms and everything. Uh, you could zip tie them together if you wanted to, but the way the bed moves, I think it might actually get in the way. That's why I left them open. Okay, now this is one of my favorite parts of these things, these little printers, is the handle. This is a great handle from Creality. Uh, it's really easy to pick up. Um, you know, it has good aesthetics to it. They can even give you the STL if you wanted to reprint a new one. Okay, here's a look at the actual firmware for this device. Um, as you can see, it is 2061, which is the Marlin version that it is. Now it's, you know, standard Marlin. Um, it has everything that you would kind of expect to see in Marlin. 
uh, you know, you have your motion, temperature, and configuration menus, change filament. Under motion, you can move all of your axis. You know, again, all standard. Your temperature, you can set your nozzle, your bed, you have preheat. Uh, again, everything is pretty much standard, what you would expect. Except, you know, for whatever reason, they decided not to put in any type of tramming help. You know, like normally you have a, a, a tramming wizard, I guess you could say, that'll move the hot end to the various points of the bed, you know, right above the screws. But for whatever reason, they decided not to put that in here. Um, I don't know why. I mean, again, you can see it has every other option that you would want. Here's, you can even auto-tune um, your PIDs. You know, everything else is in here. But they, you know, they don't have anything to help you tram. Uh, again, it, it boggles my mind. Now, if you look at the instructions that come with the printer, they tell you to go in here, go under motion, disable steppers, and then manually manipulate the head, you know, to each spot on the bed. And that's fine. I mean, you know, that'll get the job done. Um, I just don't know why they wouldn't add an option in here to help you with that. And I'll get into why I have such a rant on this because, you know, it is labeled as a beginner printer, so they should make it as easy as possible for the beginner. Okay, so this is why I have such a problem with them not having a tram wizard. Now here, my Z has already tripped, but as you can see, there is still a little bit of movement that's possible for it. And as soon as I disable the steppers per their instructions to tram my bed, my Z can actually drop a little bit. And when it does that, now my tramming is off. So it, it causes problems. You know, I've, I've had serious issues with trying to get this bed flat, and this is why. Okay, here's another issue. The screen is very wobbly, and I mean, it's held on with plastic. That's probably the cause of it. It just has two pegs that go into slots. They're just not very uh, secure. Okay, so before we get into any prints, I wanted to show you this. Now, they give you several handles uh, as STL files, and this is actually one of them, which is kind of neat, kind of interesting. Not 100% sure what they were going for here, but it's like a spaceship. And it's a two-part, you know, there's a little thing that fits right in this section to cover over the screws. It's kind of neat, but it is super freaking difficult to print, uh, or at least print decently. Um, uh, again, you know, this is labeled as a beginner printer. Uh, they're selling this is a beginner printer. And this thing is super frustrating. I, I've tried printing it like three times, and every time it, it constantly fails because it's all support underneath it. Um, you know, I don't know this, I'm not 100% sure why they included this. Okay, so here's the standard print, you know, from the SD card. This is pre-sliced. Um, it's a bunny. I'm not sure why Creality has started giving out bunnies, but it seems like every SD card you get with one of their printers has a bunny on it. But anyway, let's see how this one turns out. Okay, let's see what we got here. It's a nice little bunny. And I mean, as you can see, the bed is, is pretty good. It's flat. And the curves look really, really nice. Now, there's some stringing up here uh, between the ears. And that's probably my filament, to be honest. But all in all, I mean, it, it is a great little bunny rabbit. Um, I mean, you can see the curves are really, really smooth. It's really nice job okay so moving on they don't really give you a whole bunch of stuff to print it's just a bunny and a bunch of handles but this is a benchy I'm using the um, predefined Creality Ender 2 Pro profile that's in Prusa Slicer I haven't made any changes you know again this is just using standard stuff um, so I wanted to see how this benchy here turns out uh, using their 
uh, stock profile. In case it now we're actually printing that benchy using my favorite purple filament. Let's see how it turns out. Okay, um, it looks pretty good. You can see there's a little bit of cooling issue at the bottom of the hole. There's your normal hole line. See, that doesn't look too fantastic. Otherwise, it, it looks pretty good though. Yeah, that, at the very bottom, there's a little bit of stringing right there where you can see it. And again, that's probably my filament because it hasn't been tuned. Otherwise, it looks good. Okay, so I wanted to print something a little bit uh, more difficult. This is a little mummy that I found off of uh, printables. And for it, we're going to have to use some supports. And like I said before, I actually tried printing that spaceship several times and the supports just kept failing on me on this machine for some reason. Um, again, it, I'm using stock uh, profile, you know, the one that comes with Prusa Slicer. I haven't tuned really anything. This is basically, you know, as, uh, as stock as it can be. Um, you know, to show you what you would expect just pulling this out of the box. But that's what it's going to look like. I am using organic supports, as you can see here. And let's uh, save this guy and print it and see what we get. Okay, so here's the actual print of our mummy. Well, let's see how it turns out. All right, so here's what we got. He's very stuck. Let me pull him off of this bed. See how easy it is to get things off of this bed. It's really nice, I like it. And there's what he looks like. Um, everything looks pretty good. These supports are on here. But you can see he actually looks pretty good. The supports are peeling off fairly well. The space though, they are really on there. Give me a second, let me go ahead and pull these off. Okay, so now I've got all the supports off. You can see how he turned out. Uh, I think he really looks good. There's a little bit, you know, where the supports are still there and you could clean that stuff up. I basically just pulled them off. But all in all, I would say our little mummy guy looks pretty good. There, wrong the back maybe and on the bottom. All in all though, I, I would give this a pass. Good job. Okay, so lastly, I wanted to do this little fidget uh, controller thing it's a nice little print um, I'm actually going to do this one in silk to see how that turns out again I'm not using anything um, tuned you know I'm just using the stock stuff that comes with the system so we will see how it turns out and uh, We'll save it and print it. It's an easy print, you know, there's not a lot to it. Uh, no supports or anything necessary. Let's go ahead and save this guy and see how it goes. Okay, and then this is the actual print of our fidget toy. 
Again, I'm using silk for this, so we'll see how it does. All right, here's our base, and then here's our top. Let's see if I can get that off. Um, don't want to break it, it's like a little spring. There we go. Now it's a very loose fit, and you can see the seam there. Probably would have been better to align that seam instead of having it random. should have aligned that seam. But anyway, the print itself looks fantastic. I mean, it is uh, super great. Other than the two pieces are really loose. They are really loose. But, I mean, you can adjust all that. Again, it's probably the filament. You need to do flow testings and things like that. Now, the bottom... It doesn't look too great, and that seam looks horrible. You can see some issues on the turns for the bottom. Okay, final thoughts on the Ender 2 Pro. Uh, it prints great, as you can see, um, once you get the bed leveled. And the bed leveling is a problem, because, you know, um, I, they market this thing for beginners, and the way that they want you to tram the bed is to turn the steppers off. And as soon as I turn the steppers off, my z-axis may or may not drop and if it drops then things are off if it doesn't drop everything's fine so you know not having some type of level support in the firmware is a massive problem for me it, you know it, it's in the firmware all they had to do was turn it on and they chose not to for whatever reason i don't know why i could say but it was a bad decision in my book and for that reason, I cannot recommend this printer. Even though I like the hardware, I like the aesthetics of it, I like everything basically about it, I can't because of that one simple thing. Now, you fix that one simple thing, it's a fine printer. However, I would not pay full price for this. Not at all. If they were selling it $99, $90, somewhere in that range, I think it's a good, good deal. But again, you're going to have to get different firmware. Or you need to do a G code that will actually move it to all the points. I look up Chep, you know, on YouTube. He has some of those that'll move it around the bed. Anyway, if you like this kind of content, like and subscribe. And as always, happy printing.